Many people have reported that Venus was out of its normal orbit, had become more elliptical, um, and that, that seemed fairly obvious about a year and a half ago when at 10.30 p.m. it was setting on the western horizon and was so high up in the sky that highest above the horizon that I'd ever seen it, that would have meant um, it was more elliptical and as some models had predicted through the passage of planet X through the solar system. The other thing that was really noticeable is the very first time it passed in between Earth and the Sun we had a very significant outbreak and a sudden outbreak of earthquakes more than we're used to seeing Venus create. Recently Venus is not so high above the horizon. No, about half of where it was a year and a half ago and a lot of it depends on Earth's position and a lot of it depends on where where it is when it reaches its maximum how do I say this, its maximum height above the horizon. Venus is starting to pass between Earth and the Sun again. We see a series of earthquakes um, one in the Banda Sea, in Indonesia, uh, was a seven-pointer actually. Uh, then uh, along again in that, that chain we saw a six-pointer. Now, there hasn't been any string of quakes, but again, this is a very fast passage. This is right at the beginning of the alignment. So we're looking again for a 6.5 to creep up here in the next, next three or four days. And again, the, the number of earthquakes uh, occurring in Alaska along the volcanic territories and along the fault lines, we see a sudden surge, and which is what happens during large body alignments, but it's ha happening at the beginning of the Venus alignment with Earth and the Sun. So, so it really looks like it's still geo-effective, but we really don't have any other uh, alignments happening. There could be a 90 degree alignment directly with planet X and Jupiter, but that will not transpire till another um, three weeks when Earth comes back around and aligns more appropriately with Jupiter itself and planet X. That should produce a, a longer string of, string of quakes that are more protracted in terms of time the the solar wind we're seeing um, anomalies that indicate where the flow is if earth is in this position today you see where the wind is blowing remember that most of the wind coming off the sun comes out in this spiral fashion so therefore if something let's say was up and out of the solar system at certain points in time it's going to meet its wind its particles are going to meet resistance but then as the spiral arms open up then you'll see an acceleration of the particles that fall in between the cracks in between those those spiral arms being that at the top of the screen that wind then will be accelerated we know that when it gets into the corona of the sun that it ionizes and that's where we see that flashing in the corona where we see collisions and loss of electrons and ionization of neutral particles. But so we would expect then any magnetic field from the Y component, which is an, a solar system component, has nothing to do with the sun and has nothing to do with the poles. It's actually our connection to um, outside influences. And for the first time in history, a few years ago, the Y component started um, affecting the BZ component. We see also compression, compression of our magnetosphere, as, and it's kind of steady with some surges. The normal standoff distance of our magnetosphere is up around 12 to 14, so we're seeing a constant pressure upon the magnetosphere, which then indicates we are seeing less opposition between the sun's wind and planet X's wind. Then we go to the actual instruments that measure this stuff. And we see an anti-correlation sometimes between density and speed. Normally, when the density of the particles uh, is low, 
the speed is high, but the density in orange, speed in yellow, um, sometimes you will see an anti-correlation where the speed and density increase at the same time. That kind of defeats the physics. When you have more particles, you, they travel slower. And so that's, that's really indicative of additional particles uh, falling into the solar system. Also notice the temperature. You see where the temperature drops down to 10 to the 4. Generally, I associate the cooler temperature with planet X's electrons, planet X's wind. So we don't see that mixing. We actually see it coming and going, coming and going as those spiral arms open up and let in the second wind, you will see more long, longer durations of that lower temperature. And again, Ulysses and other spacecraft that measure the helium wind has determined that the particles from planet X are accelerated to about 450 kilometers a second when they get close enough to the sun. So we're seeing really the wind on this side of the sun really running most of the time between 450 and 500 kilometers a second. Uh, or yeah, And so, so, but you know, once in a while we'll see a slowdown to the 400 kilometers a second. I think they even went down as low as 350 kilometers a second. But again, we are not in close and tight to the sun where we're seeing the maximum acceleration of that neutral helium. So, but when the temperature on green, we don't see the mixing that we see on the other side of the sun where it looks like more spiking, uh, very closely associated with other spikes. Uh, we see more of a linear progression with longer prolonged uh, decreases in temperature. When we go to the the actual commerce report and the solar wind report, remember we used to show you all the time where the electrons were at moderate to high levels, the low energy electron, and that the protons were, were gone. They were nowhere to be found. And we theorized that uh, helium-3 was capturing uh, these protons and becoming helium-4. The helium instrument that used to measure that would show uh, in unequal humps on the graph where the helium-3 did not outnumber the helium-4. Helium-4 always runs in a greater abundance in all of the solar system and in the universe. But then one day we saw equal humps. So to me that in terms of amplitude. So that was telling me that we were having more helium-4 in the solar system, less helium-3, which defies explanation unless you uh, characterize the um, neutral H3 um, as capturing a proton and becoming H4. Then that would give you less H3, more H4. It also would give you fewer protons. So, but then the electrons would still remain at whatever their levels would be. So that would account for the shift in the solar system that nobody's really showing you or talking to you about or going on. Then you go to the actual like ACE proton measurements. And ACE really has a hard time differentiating between alpha particles and protons because alpha particles are very similar to protons. Um, and in terms of their, their chemistry, they're uh, um, a hydrogen atom missing missing its electrons. In the case of an alpha particle, it has an extra neutron usually. Um, but when your instrument is so devoid of data, how do you determine what your proton count really is? And when they don't address it in the commerce report, it looks like they're hiding the absence of protons. But I would like to call your attention to sunspot number 2916. Right there at the lower right has got some mixing going in. We're looking in four or five days for that to produce an M flare. NASA says 5%, we're saying 90%. Uh, we did have an M flare uh, at the top this week at the beginning of the alignment. Roughly around the same time, we were having that seven point uh, earthquake and the outbreaks and the super calderas and, and such. So, that would be your solar system update for today.
Thank you for listening. I encourage you to help us out by going to Patreon and subscribing to us there at Patreon backslash Higher Truth Rises. All one word.